Hello YouTube. Uh, if you were watching the previous video, I left you off at uh, this point that we uh, finished creating the model. And now we are going to add the excitation and also the boundary. Also, we are going to talk about the mesh and uh, create the analysis and uh, work uh, the rest for the third tutorial. So let's go and uh, create the um, excitation first. So as you remember, we had a coil here that this coil, as you can see in the reddish color, um, I'm selecting the coil, uh, is going to excite the uh, stator and the stator is going to generate some force that we are going to measure. Also, the coils inside is going to have some inductance. We are going to measure that as well. And uh, we want to also change the gap uh, variable here to see what will happen to the force and to the inductance and these are all going to be measured outside of the Maxwell um, in an environment called simple loader okay um, to first excite the coil what we are going to do is we are going to generate two pieces of face inside the coil and then we are going to give a current going through one of them and get rid of the other one so when you are saying that I want to have um, this amount of current inside the exi inside this cross section of the coil you're actually going inside a loop and generating current there so this is very easy way to uh, basically simulate the current inside the coil so let's uh, do that um, I'm gonna go to the modeler and then I'm gonna select the surface and uh, from that I'm gonna go select the section and uh, now I'm going to go for the section at Y and Z. If you look at this, Z is in red axis and Y is in blue. And if you go for that, for that location, you can see that it will cross, uh, basically make the coil in half. So that's exactly what we want. So Y and Z, press OK. And now we have these two sections of the coil ready for us to examine. Um, one thing we can do is we can call this fellow here um, so the coil section here we can call it for example the terminals or the coil terminal and um, so I'm gonna call it terminal and and now we have two parts what which one of them is enough I don't need to have two so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the modeler and then I'm going to select the boolean and from the boolean part I'm going to say separate bodies. Now that I separated the bodies I have one part here and one part there. Okay. Now I'm going to select one of these parts. Uh, so I'm going to delete the separate one. Uh, I'm going to go to edit and then delete or you just press delete key. Okay now I got rid of one of them. Now I select the coil terminal, right click on that and go to excitation and select the current excitation. In the current excitation, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some um, a variable current. So instead of having a fixed value for the current, I can call it the um, uh, current at coil, right? And uh, or actually what we can call it is we can call it amp per turn and uh, the reason that we are saying it as I said before when you are in the stranded view uh, sorry in the stranded type of the coil we I mean Ansoff uh, or Maxwell will dis decide that the coil is going to be uh, created from several turns maybe infinite number of turns and that means that you don't have the impact of the skin effect and what that means is you don't have the eddy current um, I mean the eddy current effect cannot be eddy current is not going to create the skin effect and therefore in higher frequency you don't have this skin effect uh, that causes higher resistance and lower quality factor so everything is kind of perfect um, you can have the same effect when you're using the leads wire by the way um, the other thing that you get with the stranded is now you can have a number of turns and um, at this time when you say ampere per turn that means that you put like a value of one amp and it means it's either one amp for one turn or it's 0.1 amp for 
10 turn and or it's like 10 milliamp for 100 turns so when you say amp turn it's whatever amp per turn so that's the result um, so what you have to divide per each turn how much amp you have there um, so now you've done with that one and uh, you press OK definitely you will be asked what is this amp it understands that it's in the, in the unit of current and also the amp I'm gonna put the value of 500 and uh, 80 for that and uh, this is a lot of current that's gonna make a lot of excitations and uh, then I'm gonna do uh, another thing uh, if you notice here we have a steel standard stand standless steel for the stator and also we have a, a Cooper for uh, the coil and these guys are touching each other. I mean, in many parts, you can see that these guys are touching. You can actually make them to not touch each other by uh, adding a, a bit of like um, changes or like spaces between that when you are basically uh, subtracting the inner uh, base coil. If you remember from the previous tutorial, uh, if you made it a fatter base coil, we basically make this uh, um, subtract a bit fatter and therefore it was not touching the, the stator but uh, generally uh, one way to very well uh, define the coil um, very close to the reality is to say you know I don't want to have any leakage from the uh, coil to the to the uh, basically uh, uh, stator um, if you designed if you manage to model it in a way that they are not touching each other uh, you can actually mod you can actually check it if it's true or not uh, one way to do that is you go to Maxwell 3d and then you go to excitations and under the excitation menu you select conduction path and under the conduction path you say show conduction path and over here you can see that these two guys are actually touching each other we have one conduction path that is uh, only coil and the reason is because we had a closed uh, loop for the coil and we have a very nice path there and we have another conduction path that is basically generated from the stator um, uh, to the um, uh, basically to the uh, sorry, uh, we have another conduction that, that is for the armature, of course, because armature is also uh, steel. But here, this conduction path is going to um, have uh, leakages to the stator. So what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the leakages and make sure that we are not having any leakage to the stator. There is no short circuit here. So to do that, you go and click on you go and click on a stator and also a stator uh, one which is uh, underline one which is the copy of that and um, you go to the Maxwell 3d and select Maxwell 3d and you go to boundaries or you can right click on that actually that's the same so I'm gonna do the right click here so you right click on the two selected uh, parts and you say assign boundary and in the boundaries we have different boundaries that I will talk about that later but one of the boundaries that we are actually going to use here is called insul uh, insulating um, uh, boundaries I was going to say insulting um, boundary but no insulating uh, boundaries and that boundary is going to insult us oh actually no so when you click on that uh, uh, and now you have your uh, insulting boundaries around the, the stator so that is a good news because that means that uh, there are not, there, there's going to be no uh, leakage from the coil to the stator and everything would be as uh, perfect that we were looking for okay so on this point I'm just gonna call it um, uh, insulating insole um, basically a stator right because it's going to insulate this stator for us 
pressing OK on that. And then if you uh, expand this, you can see that under the boundaries, you have this insulating for the stator. So there we go. A stator is not going to, nothing goes inside the stator. OK. Now, it's time for us to define our parameters as an output parameters. As we discussed before, we are uh, looking for the force to calculate how much force we have. Um, to do that, um, you have to first uh, select which uh, pa uh, parameters or which geometry you want to see what, how much force you will apply to that. So uh, you select the armature and then you right click on the parameters and then you go on assign and then force and then uh, we have our force for the armature. Um, <clears throat> the type would be virtual and uh, we will select OK from that point to continue creating the force output. Also, we want to check out the inductance of the coil. That means that we want to have a matrix for the inductance and uh, we, want to we want to see that the current one that is creating this inductance for us uh, is selected in the coil. That's okay. And um, you uh, know better than me that um, uh, you can actually, after that, you have some post-processing and you can say, you know, this coil has this number of turns and uh, this post-processing processing values are going to uh, do the calculation for you. It's not a, that much of a hard calculation. It's either times or divided by a number of turns a square. And uh, from that point, uh, you can have the exact value of the inductance and... Uh, anything else but right now at this point I want to just say one turn and uh, consider that as um, basically a one uh, turn a straight wire going around the uh, <coughs> a stator okay so now I'm gonna press OK on that and lastly I wanna also uh, tell you about the assigning how to assign the mesh uh, since we have a variable here for the modeler it's a good practice to make sure that uh, everything is well so to do that um, one thing we want to do is we want to create a mesh um, uh, <clears throat> basically inside the selection and uh, give it some resolution. So it starts from that resolution at the very beginning. Uh, press Control and then press A uh, to select everything that you have. And then go to the Maxwell 3D and under the, under the mesh operation, you want to select Assign. And after that, you want to select Inside Selection. And then you want to select the Length Based. Okay. Now, uh, over here, you want to make sure that the restricted length of element is checked. Um, sorry, it's unchecked. So you don't want to restrict that. And also, um, the restricted number of element is checked. So you want to make sure that the number of um, element, is, there is a restriction on that, but there is no restriction on the length of element. So then in that case, we can actually have um, the mesh operation going with any uh, constraint that is necessary for the mesh engine to take to actually make the tetrahedral um, for calculation. But we want to make sure that the number is not uh, over 25,000. Uh, you can make it 30,000, you can make it whatever number that you think your uh, <coughs> processing uh, resources can handle, but um, it can be higher or lower than that. Okay, press OK for that. And uh, the last thing that you want to do is you want to create a region that will uh, talk to our simulator that this is the region that you are going to do all your uh, simulation in. I'm going to select on create region here and um, I want to say that the pad is on all uh, directions uh, similar and then I want to just say a padding value of 100 uh, inch and then I just press OK on that and that will give us our region here so I'm gonna press uh, control and then D so it will give us a good uh, zoom on the entire design that we have so at this time at this moment we are having a design uh, which I mean you should have a design that looks like this and after that the only thing that is missing 
is right clicking on the analysis and create an analysis um, everything should be default the same you don't need to change anything and leave it like that okay press ok for that now that you have the analysis you can do verification of your entire system uh, the verification result pass you can see that um, because I defined the analysis is just recently uh, the analysis setup is there optometrics mesh operation parameters boundaries 3d design and design settings all set and ready for simulations okay that will conclude the excitation boundary and simulation and also mesh um, <coughs> operation uh, I will see you in the next tutorial that we are going to talk about extraction and also uh, talking about the results